Soboroff, Kim and Saltzman are present and we have a quorum. Number one on the agenda, commission comments. Uh, no commission comments this morning. Thank you. Number two on the agenda, the report of the Chief of Police. Chief Beck. Good morning, Commissioners. Morning, Chief. Thank you. Uh, we had a, uh, a busy weekend uh, with a number of events. I'll comment very briefly on. I know that the Commission uh, attended several of them, and I want to thank you for your attendance. We had a cadet graduation. Uh, well over uh, 700 young people graduated at Galen Center that joined the ranks of our cadets, which uh, well over 6,000 strong. Uh, we also had our gun buyback. Uh, over 700 weapons were recovered. Uh, during the gun buyback, including uh, uh, 29 assault weapons and multiple handguns. It was a successful event held in two locations uh, throughout the city. And last night I attended a town hall meeting uh, in uh, Van Nuys area. Uh, well attended, uh, good conversation about uh, community issues uh, in the valley. My crime report, uh, we made a little progress on uh, overall crime. Uh, at the height of the crime increase uh, for this year, we were at just over 15 percent. We've been able to reduce that to just over 13 percent. And I anticipate that we'll make more progress as the uh, remainder of the year develops because we, we're coming up on some weeks and months that, uh, that were very problematic last year for us as far as crime goes. Homicides uh, continue to be down in the city, almost 10 percent, a little over 9.5 percent. Uh, other violent crime uh, up. 24% property crime up a total of 10.9% total part one crime increase 13.4% <coughs> gang crime continues to be an issue as compared to last year uh, as you will recall last year was was uh, uh, one of our uh, or was our lowest uh, year uh, for gang crime but, but this year we've uh, seen an increase of uh, almost 24% so we're dealing with that through our through our uh, programs of uh, prevention, intervention, <laughs> suppression, and reentry, uh, bolstered by the mayor's uh, uh, budget, which increases all those programs for the city. <laughs> Traffic accidents uh, are up in the city of Los Angeles, uh, up 12.4 percent in total. Uh, motor vehicle versus pedestrian accidents are down, and uh, serious motor vehicle versus pedestrian accidents are down 10.1 percent. As I mentioned last week, uh, one of the reasons that, that uh, we spend time enforcing pedestrian laws is not because we prefer uh, motor vehicles versus over pedestrians, it's because uh, pedestrian accidents are so serious. We've had 31 pedestrians uh, killed in uh, vehicle accidents so far this year to date. We have 9,867 sworn <laughs> personnel on payroll, 2,714 civilian personnel, over 400 uh, reserves, 371 specialist volunteers, 61 uh, chaplain counselors, and 6,093 cadets. Um, final note is that uh, this Saturday uh, will be our uh, True Blue Banquet, which is a primary fundraiser for the Police Foundation, and that will happen at LA Live. That concludes my report. Thank you. Please let the record reflect. Commissioner Figueroa Villa is now present. And we do have three comment cards on this item. We have uh, Prentice Jenkins, Najee Ali, and Mr. Herman. <coughs> I'd ask that all the speakers line up so we can save as much time as possible. Thank you, sir. Uh, apparently, we had another death of Police shooting Brendan Glenn in Venice, California. I continue to impress upon the commission that there is a lot of post-traumatic stress among police officers. And there are a lot of police officers with post-traumatic stress that can handle their jobs. And then there are the ones that can't handle their jobs. They're the quick draw ones. Brendan Glenn is dead. Nobody knows why he's dead. He was a homeless man. Nobody cares about the homeless, of course. So you can kill as many of those as you want. Nobody cares about people who don't have a voice. That's why we're all here. We're giving them a voice. Without us being here, they wouldn't have a voice. Reality is this. You got problems in the police department. You got problems in the, in the fire department. The fire department knows that they're, they're crazier than some of the cops. And they don't even have guns running up and down the street 
blaring their horns. Yeah, this agenda item is on the chief of police, and you're talking about firemen? Yeah, I'm yeah. talking about so, significant uh, so incidents. So why don't you stay on topic? I'm talking about significant incidents, wasting your sir. time right now. This is significant incidents. You're wasting my time. I was talking. I could have been done. Stay on topic? I am on topic. Fine. The, the topic, reality is not. it doesn't matter that you don't like what I'm saying. The reality is you got a lot of psychotic people in the fire department reality and the police is you department. you follow the rules. I, I am following the rules. If you'd follow the rules, you wouldn't interrupt me. Just let me talk and I'd be done. The reality is this. You need, the, the fire department and police department needs help. And you won't give them psychological help. The second they, they look for psychological help, you deem them crazy and you, you get rid of them. They can't get help. These people need help for them. Post-traumatic stress disorder is a mental illness recognized by the American Psychiatric Association. Remember that. Morning, sir. Good morning, members of the commission, Chief Beck and staff. Uh, my name is Najee Ali. I'm the political director of the civil rights organization, the National Action Network. Uh, Chief Beck, last week in response to the shooting death of Brennan Hill, a homeless man in Venice, you're quoted in several media reports stating that any time an unarmed person is shot by a Los Angeles police officer, it takes extraordinary circumstances to justify that. I have not seen those extraordinary circumstances. That's your quote, Chief Beck. First of all, I've been an activist since the days of Daryl Gates. I've known you personally since the days of Harbor Gateway and the murder of Shell Green. I want to commend you publicly for at least having the courage and the conviction uh, to state that publicly, knowing you would take heat from the union and other officers. Uh, so Chief Beck, I do believe what you're saying is true, and we're all calling for the release of the videotape as soon as possible. Uh, we do believe the officer's name should be released publicly. Uh, we believe that uh, any threats that may be against him should have been vetted out by now. Uh, we also are asking for the police commission once the investigation is completed and if it's warranted to fire this officer and bring charges against him. We want District Attorney Jackie Lacey to prosecute him for the death of Britton Hill because in our opinion, that officer doesn't belong in the ranks of LAPD. He belongs in jail with pinstripes on. So uh, once again, in my closing, we want to commend you, Chief Beck. And when the LAPD is right and you're right, we'll back you 1,000%. Because as I stated publicly, we are not anti-police. We're simply anti-police killing of unarmed citizens, and we're against police abuse. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next. As I'd like to indicate for the record, I place a card on item one and also for public comment for the record. But as we all have heard, you know, violations of Brown Act continue to occur even among our commissioners who interrupt speakers. We're talking about rewards, deaths. The gentleman's right. It's a little off topic, but on track. So what have we experienced as a serious gang problem? Captains of LAPD call for greater gang suppression tactics, injunctions as a tool. I'm not against it. I'm only against criminal activity, criminal entity, where activities details that are identified as the war of, on gang territories or gang war, am I right, Mr. Sobra? Territories, violence, murders, death, considered by law enforcement such like tagging, city hall call it art, selling illegal items, throughout the streets, some may be stolen, some may be fruit and vegetables, bad to our safety and health, who fucking cares? And then we have stolen property, drug sales, gun sales, and what about the drinking and alcohol in or about in public areas? Or minors that uh, don't even know what the curfew is. Do you impose on this law? It's already here. <coughs> this already is a problem. The already crimes that do not need gang injunctions, just simply law enforcement. Mr. Eric Garcetti, for the record, stop wasting the public's money. Prevention stops violence. Education is the force of one to start with. Again, stop violence. Evidence proving that persons acted in a way that harms the community. I find the city of Los Angeles guilty of that. 
for the permit of alcohol licenses <coughs> throughout Broadway. Next. Item number three, the report of the executive director, Mr. T. Fink. T. Fink. Good morning, Mr. President, members of the commission. Uh, again, just a brief reminder to the community of our next uh, Police Commission community meeting, which will be held on Thursday, May 28, 2015, from 6.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. It'll be hosted by Council Member Mitchell Englander at the Shepherd of the Hills Church, 19700 Rinaldi Street in Porter Ranch. And that concludes my report. Okay, we Thank do you. have one public comment card. We have Mr. Herman. brought my do doggy bag just in case the calendar doesn't. See, uh, Mr. Tifeng, I brought a calendar. And remembrance of the badge for no longer on my chest. I sleep now in the internal rest. My sword I pass to those behind. I pray for those men in blue who have passed away. Behind, I pray for them to keep their thought. I do keep you in mind, our fallen officers of today. But incidentally, Mr. T. Fank, in our calendars, we need to put, provide more community uh, outreach, which means we need to step it up into the communities and, and provide calendars, such as the one here, very colorful, from Nuri Martinez's office I found this morning at City Hall. Look at that. Every drop counts, DWP, calendar week, trees, save water. And now we have the Jewish synagogue down there on the District 5 West Side, who cares about it? The grass is dead. This is not a drought. I'm off topic though, but let's get back to the calendar. So, Mr. Sobrov, you should provide us more attention to our comments when it comes to the calendar. You should include yourself in the meetings with Mr. Tifang at City Hall under the calendar that he represents. You can take 10 more seconds, but it's the Mormon temple. It wasn't the Jewish synagogue. I'm glad you corrected me. Yeah, but you can have, take 10 more seconds. Thank you. Stay on topic, too. Correct. So in regards to our calendar, we need to have the community involved. It is we, the people in our community, that suggest what should be on the calendar. It is in the interest of the media to know what's on the calendar prior to events that happen, not later or catch you later, but now in a time of the war on gangs in the city of Los Angeles, prevent it, put it on the calendar. Thank you. Item number four, report of the Inspector General, Mr. Bustamante. Uh, thank you, Commissioners. I have nothing to report today. We do have two public comment cards. We have Mr. Jenkins and Mr. Herman. I think we need a subcommission of people like us. Because, as I said, you folks don't live on the streets. You, you don't know what's going on in the streets. You live in nice ivory towers. And you look down on all those people. I truly believe we need a subcommission made up of us to let you know what's going, out on the, what's going on on the streets. Maybe you don't want to know what's going on on the streets. But you find out what's going on in the streets when a cop kills someone. That's when you find out what's going on on the streets. Uh, chief, I put it put together. Can you get that to the chief? Uh, this is for the inspector general. For the inspector general? OK. Yeah. For the inspector general, I put together a proposal on putting people like us on a subcommission. I suggest that you look at it. It's a rough draft. Take a look at that because you, you really can't understand what's going on in the streets. Mr. Soberoff. How many times have you been down Skid Row? <laughs> Not many times, have you? That's a dangerous place for you. Mr. Jenkins, you need to stay on topic. I am on topic. No, you're not. This is about significant. I'm not going to argue with you. Sir, stay this on topic. is about significant incidents. And the reason there are significant incidents is because you folks don't know what's going on on the streets. That's what creates significant incidents. The cops don't know what's going on on the streets. So they just react. And when they react, they pull their guns and they shoot somebody. And somebody's dead. That's called significant incidents. And I'm talking about significant incidents, <laughs> folks. You're dealing with people who have a mental illness, post-traumatic stress disorder, and you won't deal with it. 
and more people are going to die. Brendan, this guy was alive a week ago. A week later, he's dead. And the cops killed him. And no one knows why he's dead. You don't know why. I know why he's dead. Post-traumatic stress disorder, mental illness. Mr. Herman. Steve, getting there as fast as I possibly can move through the crowd. East Side Sun, recent violence sparks debate on gang injunction tools. Uh, East Side, another problem. But let's talk about the current event of today. What is a criminal act by the color of authority? What do you say is excessive force? When content of video surveillance shows, proves, you, under the color of authority, use excessive force, assault, and harass people, Mr. Inspector General Alexander A. Bustimante, for the record. This is for the record, is called a criminal entity under the disguise of blue. Not all police officers are bad, but I'm regarding this to those that are a little off in color, multiple colors, not like my <coughs> color. <coughs> Incidentally though, gang colors of abuse and waste of the taxpayers' monies for settlements. To you, Clifford Alford Jr., and thank you, Ms. Kerry Harper, the 20-year-old proved his point. Where's the balance? What resources? What partnership do we have when it comes to our lives? My goal is to adopt a budget that reflects our city's values and commitment to public safety. Eric Garcetti, as he said in the East Side Sun, Mr. Charlie Beck, but this is about the Inspector Your General. Your comments are to the Inspector We General. ask you, Mr. Inspector General, as I am being interrupted, to investigate under the law, again, reference for the law, to the highest potential that you may have. Thank you. We're now on item number five. Item number five consists of information items and filed items relative to noise variances and special event permits submitted for the period ending May 8, 2015. Item number six, presentations. Do we have any presentations? None today. Thank you. Item number seven, consent agenda items. These items are considered to be routine and non-controversial, upon which the board is provided with adequate information for approval without inquiry or discussion. Would a commissioner wish to pull an item as special 7A through 7H? We have approval of item 7A through 7H. A second, a second with thanks to the donors. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Item number eight. Item number eight, regular agenda items. Item 8A is a verbal presentation. Would a commissioner wish to pull an item as special for discussion 8B? I move approval of item 8B. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 8A. Thank you. We'll begin with item number 8A, verbal Hello. presentation and update from the commanding officer and community police advisory board representative regarding community initiated problem solving, crime strategies, and other programs and goals within the North Hollywood area. Morning. Thanks Good morning. For thanks for coming down. Good morning and thanks for having us. Uh, first, I'd like to uh, reach out and thank uh, our former CPAP co-president, uh, co-chair uh, Josh Rubenstein for his uh, four years of service as our co-chair. He was an awesome uh, partner and I'd like to introduce our new uh, CPAP co-chair, Ron Dresser. Now, Ron is a uh, active member of the American Red Cross. He's on the uh, board of directors. He's the chair of the community and public affairs for American Red Cross and a six-year member of the North Hollywood CPAP. Uh, he's the founder and executive director of a life transition group and a retired former owner of a, pro a professional marketing company with uh, clients that included uh, B of A, Toyota Ralphs, Vons, and, uh, and McDonald's. So we're really privileged to have Ron as a partner and we expect great things uh, this current year. As far as an overview of our current uh, CPAP, we currently have uh, 37 members, uh, 20 which are male and um, 17 which are female. Uh, 26 white, the ethnic breakdown is 26 white, 6 Hispanic, uh, 3 African Americans, uh, 3 Armenians, and 3 young adults as our uh, youth component. So when we talk about uh, our, our 2015, our we're going to go in 2015, I'm going to turn it over to Ron. Ron, thank you. 
Thank you, and thank you for all your dedication. Uh, to give a little background, which uh, will take us to 2015. In 2014, I was in an American Red Cross board meeting, and I saw that emergency preparedness was a big uh, goal for them. And their, their goal is a little different than the LAPD. Uh, they house and feed people when there is a disaster, so the more people that they can get prepared prior to a disaster uh, will help. And then I'm in a uh, CPAB meeting, and we also have the same goal, uh, emergency preparedness, for a little different reason, because the more people we have prepared, the less disobedience and, and craziness we'll have during, during an uh, emergency. So knowing and understanding this, uh, I was able to bring uh, Chief Viegas and the CEO of American Red Cross together, and I said, why don't we work together in emergency preparedness? And they agreed, and, and given I'm from North Hollywood, we, we said, let's do a t uh, test program there. So in 2014, the American Red, Cro Red Cross came out to uh, our CPAB board meeting, trained the CPAB and trained the SLOWs, uh, subsequently, after we were trained, we went out to the community, to churches, synagogues, schools, uh, neighborhood watches, neighborhood councils, homeowners associations, any major event we had. And in the year, we trained over 3,000 people mm -hmm. in emergency preparedness. The benefits, besides being trained when there is a disaster, uh, were also, number one, we increased a lot of neighborhood watches. Uh, I don't have quite the, the total number, but if I had to estimate, we probably had over a couple hundred new neighborhood watches. Uh, number two, it was a, one of the primary goals, as you know, for CPAB is communication from the police to the community and then the community back to the police. This gave us an avenue to really hear people's situations because we're with them for two hours in their homes. And uh, so it gave us a great opportunity to bond with, with the community and to get, and to get uh, email addresses, so now we have hundreds if not thousands of email addresses of people that when we have critical responses that we can get out to and communicate. Uh, with this, uh, we reviewed with Chief, uh, Chief Viegas the results and he agreed to let's expand this to the whole San Fernando Valley. Uh, subsequently on March 21st, we had a meeting uh, with all CPAB uh, board members and the commanding officers, and we explain what map, map Your Neighborhood, which is a program uh, that trains people uh, for emergency preparedness, both the individual and the community. And we have, uh, tomorrow night, we actually have the, the full training for the uh, CPAB members for the west of the San Fernando Valley. So I'm very excited about that result. Uh, the other major result I think we had uh, was outreach. We've done, uh, every month we had an outreach event, again, giving us an opportunity to communicate with uh, the community and really understand what their issues are so we can bring them back to the police and discuss them. And out of that, we developed, we're developing, we're in the process of de developing uh, senior lead officer teams so that we really can help and support uh, the, the whole community within North Hollywood. So we're, we're developing CPAD teams and a, what we call a critical response team to help support uh, Captain Carmona when there is a flashpoint or an emergency. Uh, our membership went from 18 members to 37, and it's a well-represented representation of all the uh, areas within North Hollywood. Um, we uh, developed a uh, citizen surveillance team. We have Studio City especially has been hit with lots of uh, burglary from motor vehicles and we have citizen surveillance teams that we're going out twice a month to support the police and, and help that effort to be the eyes and ears. Um, I'd just like to add that in North Hollywood, uh, you know, we serve a community of about 202,000 uh, people. 87% of our part one crime is property crime. And the reason we're so successful is we have such a, a large component of the community supporting us. Um, the relationship is, is vital. And, and North Hollywood is a very successful command. And, uh, and it's due to the relationship we have with our stakeholders. I, I think, you know, the, at the conclusion of when we look at our crime statistics for North Hollywood, I want to compliment uh, the team there that we were the second best crime reduction in the city, and I think a lot of this has to do, with, obviously, with the police work and, and the community work that we're doing. So I think the results is, are there. I want to talk about the homeless issues and, and uh, uh, mental illness issues in the 
in the community and how the CPAB, is that something on CPAB radar in addition? We just recently, yes it is, we're working with uh, uh, Councilman Kokorian's office. We recently had a, a homeless outreach at, uh, at Valley Plaza Park, which was a very successful event. Um, the issue is always getting, it's not gathering the homeless, but it's get them to, uh, to take the, uh, the services that are rendered. And so tell us about that. Um, so you created a, I don't know, farmers market uh, yeah and I don't want to take too much credit for this yeah. because this was really something that the council's office uh, put together okay. we participated on um, what we did do as a, a, a larger component was our uh, transit transient detail we had a, a dedicated two officer transient detail um, the homeless issues seem to be uh, growing throughout the city in North Hollywood is no different so we expanded that to four officers and part of that component is the resources that are available. It's not all about arresting transients, it's about knowing who is where and, and what services we can offer people and, and arresting them when appropriate. But that is uh, one step that we've taken. It's to address the quality of life issues and also the, uh, the property crime issues. And what, what are the services that were offered at that event? Uh, health, uh, dental, mm -hmm. um, uh, personal grooming, uh, uh, shelters, um, and what we were careful to do is we gathered these the homeless we, we offered these services and we made sure that if they didn't take those services which quite a few didn't but we, we gave them a ride back so we didn't end up moving a problem to a to a certain park and just leaving it there good good anything Ryan you want to say about it we're in the planning stages of uh, developing a quality of life uh, program so uh, maybe at the next time we report, we'll have something. Uh, what about more Red definitive. Cross? Is Red Cross are, are these issues that rise to the the homeless, the homelessness? Yeah, yeah. it certainly is on the radar. Uh, probably that's not the primary. I know uh, it isn't, but it's something that's on the radar and being discussed because it is a uh, ubiquitous problem in mm -hmm. throughout Los Angeles. And mental health also, sure, from, from a Red Cross perspective. Right. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. It, it's. Yeah. I would love you guys to come back and keep us informed about this. Cause Absolutely. You're on, the, you're on the forefront of it. Good, good job. Questions? Anyone? We do have three public comment cards on this item. We have Prentice Jenkins, Mr. Herman, and Ted Hayes. How'd you double your size of your board? Pardon me? Uh, bring all your friends on the board? <laughs> well, in doing the outreach, we found a, a combination of the slows and doing the outreach program, people get very interested in the work Good. we're doing. Yeah. And then they ask about the board. And we talk about, when we do emergency preparedness, we talk about neighborhood watch and crime prevention. We talk about uh, outreach. And we, we, have a, we have a plethora of people who want to join the board. We're really keeping a lid on it because th they like the work we're doing. Good, thanks. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Thanks, Steve. Thank you, guys. Keeping Mr. on the a post-traumatic stress disorder. It leads to cops, firemen, drug addiction, alcoholism. As a sidebar, has anyone, if you caught Henry Solis yet? The man who shot to death a man at a bar. Does anyone know why he shot that man to death? He drew down on him like he was Wyatt Earp, killed him, unarmed man. Have you caught Henry Solis yet? No, you haven't caught Henry Solis yet. Are you trying to catch Henry Solis? That's the question. This is the face. I have researched. This is the face of post-traumatic stress disorder, folks. This is what every cop, no matter how straight they stand here, look like. That's what they look like inside. See that guy? Every fireman looks like that inside. They look like that 24 hours a day. See that right there? That's my research. These, this is the National Volunteer Fire Council Association. These are other firemen telling you how crazy firemen are. These are firemen telling you, watch out for firemen. Uh, firemen uh, was caught buying seven Mr. balls Jenkins, of heroin. Mr. Jenkins, you have to stay on topic. This is topic. It's not, this, is, this, is significant not, just, this is significant. Okay, that's not the item we're on. I know, that's I know, I understand. I would have been done if you just let me go. You just keep interrupting. This is what I'm talking about. Drug addiction in the police and fire department. Then the they item. start stalking people. not the people. item. That we, is the item. It's not the item this, we're on. This, this, is, this is about the item. Police, the of thank you. Thank you. No, not. So it you is. have to put another, what, 15 seconds on this clock now that you interrupted me. All I'm saying is, 
you understand that you have a problem and you won't fix the problem, all you'll do is interrupt me. If you stopped interrupting me, you could fix the problem. If you just stopped interrupting me <laughs> and interrupting all of us, the problem would be fixed. That's the problem. The problem is you folks interrupting us. Next. Mr. Herman. Great articles in the paper nowadays regarding homelessness. Do we have sustainable housing for homeless people? I believe there's not. I believe there's a very low supply. And as you heard about regarding renting, even with a voucher, a homeless person cannot live in Mr. Charlie Beck's area, let alone live in Mr. Soberoth's white area over there across the 405. But homeless people live all over. They park in their cars under a bridge, at a park, at the beach, in front of City Hall, everywhere. We have homeless problem. And the real issue is how does this commission plan to address it? Now that Eric Garcetti's produced a what? Budget. And that budget really pays for most of the administrative costs. It goes directly to administrative waste, gentlemen. And Inspector General, I ask that you, along with the Attorney General, <coughs> investigate a problem systematically, audit whether or not the monies that Eric promised on this budget to suffice the population of homeless people to take us off the street. You notice I said, take us off the street, Mr. Charlie Beck? I could have the potential of being homeless, for all you may know and don't care. Do you care? Look at me when I say that, because here's a homeless man who is very direct to you, Mr. Sobrov, without any shame or disruptive. And yet you, Mr. Yeah. What does the Brown Act say? 54950 to 54963. It encompasses us all that we're not paid speakers. And we're here to address the real issues regarding our lives and the monster call us in the streets today, homeless people, degrading homeless people. Here I am, degrade me now. Mr. Hayes, good morning, sir. CPABs are interesting in that the agenda is arranged by the police department of that CPAB and the members of the PAB. But what's more interesting is the neighborhood councils that every portion of the city has. At our neighborhood council, uh, we have a regular attendance by a senior lead officer. When I pointed out to him, Metro is going to be deployed, he said, yes, I understand that, but we don't have enough cars for those people. What? They don't have enough police vehicles to deploy Metro? So I explained to him there was a place I knew where there were police cars sitting there Collecting dust. That's at the uh, Baldwin Hills Mall. There's a traffic division there. And they have about 30 cars collecting dust. So the sergeant there explained to me that the reason they're collecting dust is because they don't work well. <laughs> they, he contended they get the worst cars in the entire department at the trans, transit division of Southwest. Okay? Well, that may be true. And he explained why they have the oldest and worst battered vehicles the department has. But the question is whether or not Metro can be deployed if we don't have enough cars. Now we're going to spend millions of dollars for body cameras, but can the cameras be functional? There's no place for the officer to ride out to to take a picture? No. So I think we should have on the agenda something pertaining to police vehicles. They're costly. Cameras seem to be even more costly right now. So is that the fact that the 200 additional officers from Metro are, won't be able to get out into the field because they won't have a vehicle to take them out there? Thank you. Thank you. We're now on item number nine, public comment period. We have 11 comment cards. Let's start with Prentice Jenkins, Mr. Herman, General Dogan, and Jerry Dietrich. This is a gentleman who is 
being harassed by the Los Angeles Police Department because they saw him on his bike one day. I guess one of them, one of the male cops started with handsome and decided to go mess with him. One of the gay male cops. And they stopped the man on his bike for doing nothing. And they beat him up and jumped him. Now he's having, he's, this is a press conference. He says they got the police helicopter buzzing his house every day now. They sent the police helicopter to buzz this man's house. If you ever had the police helicopter buzz your house, you'll know you've been in, a, in, in it feels like an earthquake because they buzz my house. Gay cops on the down low. I have no problem with gay police officers in the police department. They deserve to be in the police department. But I have a problem with the gay cops on the down low running around, stopping black men just to grab their junk. I have a, a, a video of a cop. He's not an LAPD officer, but I have a video of a cop holding on to a black man's junk, and he just held on to it. And then finally the young brother had to knock it away. It actually happens. You have gay cops in the police department. Jim Parker is an openly gay cop. I applaud him. He deserves to be in the police department. The ones I don't applaud are the ones who stalk straight <laughs> men on the street. Gay firemen running up and down the street, blaring their horns, coming by men's houses because they get sexually excited. And you know what? That is fraud. Because guess what? They're using gasoline to do that. And they build a city to do it. You have a lot of gay cops and gay cops on the down low in your police department. You know it. These cops know it. I'm not saying they are. I'm not saying they're not. I'm saying you need to check your cops in the police department. Here we go. Regarding motion by Mr. Englander, who's running for county supervisor, Mr. Englander from the Valley, relative to offering a reward for information leading to identification, apprehension, and conviction of a person responsible for a shooting. We're still offering rewards for lives. It's more important than educating life to suppress the problem of the war on death in Los Angeles. We're not just the hit and run capital of the world, Mr. Charlie Beck, or Mr. Saltzman, and more so Mr. Sobroff. We become the incident settlement because you don't care about the taxpayers' dollars. If you did, you would give our officers a rank, their 8% raise as I speak, but you won't because you and Eric Garcetti are lovers or something. I don't know. But again, the badge no longer on my chest. I sleep now in internal rest. My sword I pass to those behind. All of you, I pray that we keep this thought in mind. Respect law enforcement. Respect your parents. Respect the commission and give them a fighting chance. <laughs> Their hope is in the 11 next speakers who will remind them of the assaults on Mr. Again, Mr. Englander points out Mr. Clinton Jr. Alford, who escaped the punishment of death. And now Ms. Harper rejoices for the settlement the city will pay. Riddle me do, riddle me duh. I think I found a clue to the most expensive settlement you might have to do. So keep in note, not my joke. Take for the record the accountability and responsibility of your high paying administrative job. Rewards. General Dogon, stop LAPD spying, LA can. This commission has shown total disregard and dismissing of community concerns. Never mind you shot and murdered Brendan Glenn. Never mind you shot and murdered Africa. Never mind you shot and murdered O'Connell. Never mind that the black community by a three to one margarine is disproportionately being impacted by the suspicious activity reporting program, SARS. Never mind that LAPD, including Chief Beck, showed total disregard for the federal consent degree where LAPD sabotaged 90 antennas out of 300 patrol cars. Never mind that any of our communities 
uh, spoke out, never mind that our community spoke out against the body cameras, which are an empty reform that will further expand the surveillance state. And never mind that LAPD continues to uh, arm itself up to the tooth with mass weapons. Never mind that you just can't wait to get those drones off the ground. Never mind, never mind, never mind. This is just a no sense, never mind ass boy that ain't worth two cents. Hello, my name is Jerry Dietrich. I'm with LAPD Stop Spying, or Stop LAPD Spying. Anyhow, I'm so pissed off. I've been at this the commission for months now, and all I hear are these people making all these comments to deaf ears. I mean, I, I'm not pleased with what the police department does. They, everybody complains, fills out complaints, and the police department finds none of them are valid. Okay, so I'm told, what can I do? What can I do? Come to the police commission. They're the ones who keep the police department doing what they're supposed to do. So I'm here. I'm begging you guys. Listen to the humans out there. They're talking to you. The next four speakers, Ruth Sarnoff, Tanisha Denard, Davon Williams, and Kim McGill. Welcome. I'm Ruth Sarnoff, and I um, am supportive of the uh, efforts to stop uh, the spying on <coughs> um, citizens here in Los Angeles. Um, I want to talk to you uh, a bit today about the whole issue of gentrification of the city. Um, the, um, the downtown news, by the way, is a pretty good place to go look and find out about gentrification here. What's going up and how many um, places for um, people that can afford uh, $2,000 a month rent or 4000 or whatever they go to. Um, the, the thing I want to bring to your attention is that all these big projects go through without any, uh, for the most part, California environmental impact report being done. If they were, they, that report was done, you would slow the gentrification and you would protect a lot of people in this city from uh, the pollution. This whole city, you know, if you go back and you look at your records, was all oil wells. There's oil everywhere, and there's oil now from uh, the water leaks in the city that are uh, affecting aquifers and groundwater and other things. And I would suggest that you start reading the Times, every single article, cover to cover. You know, people don't live their lives in little pockets. It's not one issue. It's how what's going on, and there's been this massive uh, transfer of wealth. In 1944, the tax rate on the wealthy was 94 percent. It did not even drop into the 50s until we got to the 70s. So Thank you. that's the problem. Thank you. Welcome. Hello, my name is Davon Williams. I'm with the Youth Justice Coalition. There are several things I would like to address. One is to hold police accountable for killing our community members. These are humans. These are people's family members, people's friends, and stuff like that. And you guys are just straight up killing them like they do not matter. I would like District Attorney Jackie Lacey to prosecute these officers, build a case, and make them go to jail like any other person in here who, if they were to do something like that, they would have to go through that situation and that process. Another thing I would like to address is I have been hearing that there are officers claiming with the case in Venice that it is not a racial case. Wrong. It is racial. It's called internalized oppression. It is just because there were black officers involved in that killing does not mean it was not a racist case. Last, stop spending money on drones and other police stuff that is oppression and redirect that money to our community to build organizations in our community up to a positive growth. Thank you. Thank you. 
Welcome. Um, good morning. My name is Tanisha. I'm with the Youth Justice Coalition. Um, I just wanted to point out um, a family bill of rights that we've been establishing with families who are um, victims of people having been killed. Um, Kim, who's behind me, is going to present, or I think she already got it. But um, a couple of things I wanted to point out um, is a couple of things. And all of these things are like little to no cost to you guys or your budget anyways. All it takes to, to meet like the family's demands is like a little emotion and like a little dignity for people. Like um, some of these things are like just reaching out to families immediately you know after the shooting and giving them access you know as soon as possible to see people's um um their family members body even though you guys don't expose everything to the public you guys could at least keep it um with the family because families are lost they don't know what's going on like step by step in the in um, in the investigation and you guys are saying oh it's under investigation but i feel like even with the family they need to know because that's their family member but you guys are you know keeping these officers safe not even like, like exposing names and stuff like that um a meeting or even apologizing you guys don't even have to say that i apologize for my officers killing this person but you can at least apologize for actions when you guys hold these forms and stuff like that everything you guys say is under investigation so little things like apologizing and making sure that we know where that officer is that he's not having a firearm and stuff like that that would mean a lot in the community forum as far as um besides you guys um still like trying to defend them like oh we work hard and stuff like that that's not something that should be said when the, um, people like are losing people it, it's not right for you guys to feel like you guys can still de defend your officers um so like i said little things like that like apologizing for their actions you don't have to say for the killing um and making sure that um, families are integrated through the process um and another thing is to um you know treat people with dignity when you're when you guys kill somebody you don't have to bring up their record um for example when africa was killed you guys start talking about why he came to this country how he had a fake name and stuff like that when it's irrelevant you guys still killed that person you know and we don't know exactly where the officer is at right now and i feel like you guys don't expose names because you guys get the community's pressure but what about all the names before mike brown got killed that weren't exposed so um i would just urge you guys to look at this thank you thank you um, good morning. Tanisha mentioned the Bill of Rights for Families whose loved ones have been killed by law enforcement, and we brought copies of that along with a comprehensive plan that the community members put together around how to deal with use of force resulting in homicide and other acts of police violence. I'm going to ask that everyone in the audience, if you can, stand up. This is about 70 people. This represents the people killed by law enforcement in L.A. County just since January of last year. We're losing about one person a week in L.A. County. Brandon Glenn was the 624th person killed since 2000. There was another man killed by the sheriffs in Cerritos. He's the 625th person, two people killed this week. We delivered PRAs today because we can't even get data about what the divisions were responsible, um, who the officers are responsible, even, even whether or not were, the people were armed, what was the cause for the stop in the first place. So we delivered PRAs today to Bustamante, to Chief Beck, and to the D records division here at LAPD um, in the hopes that in two weeks we can get real data, which is, was required under the consent decree, but is yet to be released on a regular basis and a comprehensive basis to the community. We want you to take into real consideration the community plan and to give all the community members here and thank them so much for fighting every day on these issues and standing with families every day to give them an opportunity to have a real opportunity to present to you, not for two minutes, but for 20 minutes, 30 minutes on their recommendations. We hope that you take the money that you're using to surveil the community, the fake promise of body cameras, the false um, protection of drones, the militarized weapons that are being generated every day by LAPD and other law enforcement departments, and redirect that money toward the community plan which includes community intervention workers that could really hold down peace in the streets, which have proven to drop the homicide rate by 50% in LA County and should be expanded. And finally, as part of the Police Bill of Rights that Tanisha talked about, we hope that LA County will help these families to bury their loved ones. Because they're not considered victims under your policies, they, don't, they can't apply for um, victim's compensation through the district attorney's office. That means that Charlie Cuning's family is in LA today and been in LA for a week trying to raise money to get his body back to his family and have a real burial. It means that Brendan Glenn's family contacted us for car washes to bury his family. Thank you, your time is Thank up. Thank you. The final six speakers, Hamid Khan, Ted Hayes, Brandy Brown, Kimberly Hampton, Edilberto Flores, and Pete White. Morning. Good morning. My name is Hamid Khan with the Stop LAPD Spine Coalition. I just want to see how many students are there in the, in the audience today. Just raise your hands. Quite a few. And quite a few people have gone to school and college as well. And contrary to what you may have read in theory about civic engagement and civic participation, what you're also seeing is a mockery of what civic participation means. 
that how for years and years and years community members and people come to these bodies which are supposed to be, rep be representing our interest. You have what, uh, Robert Salzman, who's a law professor. You have Kathleen Kim, who's a law professor. You have Sandra Figuera, who's an ED of a nonprofit. You would think that these three people would have some sense when our human rights and our civil rights are being constantly violated. Well, let's not think of Steve Soboroff because, you know, that's a land developer, so profit is the main motive. But the issue here is that uh, last week, LAPD murdered 29-year-old Brandon Glenn. One more murder by LAPD, one more life lost, one more number a added to crimes against humanity committed by this institution caused the Los Angeles Police Department. And while the attention is quickly placed, on the officers who pulled the trigger, it's a whole institution that is rotten, that is rotten to the core. And that's what we need to learn and that's what we need to understand. Just, just five weeks before Brandon Glenn was murdered in Venice, they murdered another man, in, uh, who, uh, Charlie Africa, in Skid Row. Five days before that, before March 1, when Charlie Africa was killed, the Stop LAPD Spying Coalition submitted an eight-page letter detailing racial profiling, detailing their community sham hearings, detailing the militarization uh, of uh, LAPD, detailing that how LAPD, including Chief Beck, who's supposed to be the police chief, how he covered up when their officers broke antennas when the Department of Justice, a federal agency, had placed those conditions on them. We had sent a detail. What did we receive back? A pathetic one-page response. One-page response that LAPD is just fine, so just shut up. Over the last four years, over a thousand reports have been submitted of racial bias and racial profiling. Do you know how many they found valid? Next. Zero. So we are a community of liars. That's what they're saying. So just remember this mockery that they're making. Mr. Hayes? There are approximately 16,000 inmates in the county jail. Most of them can vote, huh? Most people in the county jail can vote. The sheriff is an elected official. He has a very strong interest in not having people vote him out of office. We're Baca, Tanaka, they surely could be voted out of office by the inmates who were dissatisfied with their treatment in the county jail. Now, if a person is in our jail, city jail, which is not very lengthy, or the county jail, and they're not on probation or parole, even if they have a felony conviction, they may vote. Now, when you're in jail, there isn't much to do. So voting might be something you might take access to, out of grievance or out of general civic pride. But when I began to investigate this, I found out that it was a complete violation of the voting laws for the state of California. Here's the way the sheriff does it. He has Sergeant Martinez, who has ballots, blank ballots. He canvasses the jail, finds out who wants to vote, and he gives them a ballot. Then they vote on it, he takes it back, and he claims to take it to the registrar's office. But that's not the way that it's done. When you're in jail, you request a vote by mail ballot. You fill it out and you send it back in. I spoke to the people at the registrar's office. They point out the reason they don't comply with that law, which is mandatory, is because the sheriff has a right to look at all incoming mail and all outgoing mail in their department. Well, that's interesting, but that's not what the law requires. The vote by mail ballot must be sealed and returned by mail, not by distribution by a sheriff who hands them out, collects them, and keeps them in his custody till he does what do we know with it. So anyway, this will continue. It's an outrageous scandal. Brandy Brown. So um, good morning. My name is Brandy Brown. I'm from the Youth Justice Coalition. This is my daughter, Desire. Sunday was Mother's Day. Since the year 2000, it's been 625 people being killed by law enforcement. That is 625 mothers that was without their loved ones on Mother's Day. This violence has to stop. We're losing our kids. I'm afraid every day that it can be my daughter, my nephew, somebody. This violence has to stop. Our kids is our generation, they are our future. So please stop this unnecessary killing because I don't want to bury my daughter, nor my nephews, nor no other kids. So can we just please stop the killing? That's all I got to say. Thank you. Kimberly Hampton. Edilberto Flores. Good morning, everybody. My name is Edilberto Flores, and I'm with the Eustace Coalition. Uh, 
want to go ahead and just point something out real quick. So we have these these signs up here. It says serve to our community. Serve our serve to our communities, committed to leadership, to serve and protect. I'm only 19 years old. If I had a penny for each time I got pulled over and harassed, I would have had at least $2,000. You know? I would have had money in my pocket. But if there was at least a penny for each time a police officer would have came up to me, and instead of asking me where I'm from, or at least what I, they would have came up to me and asked me, are you all right? Are you right, young man? Are you doing okay? Is there anything I can help you out with? You know? At least do it what you have in your wall to protect and serve the community. You know, we have already many, a lot, lot of young people that are out there that have been shot by police officers and there's no justice for them. So at least go ahead and do what you have in your wall. Don't go ahead and just have it on there just, just to have it for people can take pictures and say, we go by that. But in reality, you guys don't even go by that, by to protect and serve, because I've never felt protective. You guys might feel protected, but I don't. You guys might go ahead and feel served, but I don't. As a little boy, I felt that I wanna go ahead I want to become an officer, but by the age of 13, I started getting harassed by officers. Started making me go ahead and reanalyze how do they go ahead and work? How do they go ahead and they look me upon? Just because I live in a certain neighborhood doesn't mean nothing. I'm just another young person that's trying to come up and get out of the neighborhood. That's so trying to educate myself. I graduated in November 2014. Not because of officers went ahead and asked me, are you doing good in school? Are you going to school? Nah, you know. If, if one officer wouldn't actually came up and asked me that, it would actually made my day better, actually. It would have made my day go easier. So thank you. My name is Kimberly Hampton. Of course, I'm here again. Chief Bex, you put on record that you would meet with me or you would have somebody from your department meet with me, and that never happened. Um, my son has a mental health issue, and your officers in the Mission Hill Department decided to arrest him and frame him for assault opposed to getting him treatment. And even I even tried to make a report with IA, and IA would not take the report because of your lieutenant who's trying to cover up what your officers did by throwing my son in the police car and smashing his foot in the door. Your uh, detectives over there has even met with the judge in secrecy to try to justify their actions. They have been harassing my son constantly, harassing him everywhere he goes and racially profiling him and trying to get him arrested and um, put in jail. I'm a mother and that's my only son. You cannot have him. You will not kill him. I am not going to pick up a gun and fight. I'm going to get on my knees and continue to pray to my God in heaven and plead the blood of Jesus on him and on my family. And I promise you that your guns, your weapons, and your mentality and your oppression will not come against the blood of Jesus. And I'm coming here in the name of Jesus. I'm not coming here in Kimberly Hampton. I'm coming to tell you that you better get these cops right and leave my family alone. And it's unfortunate for me to have to say Hampton is part of this LAPD department, if you look that name up. Hampton is also part of the assemblyman in Pasadena, California. So I hold ties to your department and to the assemblyman in Pasadena, and, I'm, and my son is still being harassed. But you know what? It's okay, because I'm coming in the name of Jesus, not in my own name. And I promise you, those officers that doing this, they will, they will seek. They will have to um, answer to my God. What was the name of, this, uh, of the speaker just before this lady, the man in the back? Will you see me after the meeting? Okay. You know, it's interesting. <clears throat> How dare you sit, watch, listen, as our communities continue <coughs> to be killing fields. Community residents coming up to you, giving you straight up recommendations, saying we are peacekeepers, saying that these are the things that we need to do to stop the killing, and you just look, you just look out and do nothing. 
We were here before Brother Akanyo. We were here before Brother Africa. We was here before Brendan Glenn. And the body count continues to increase. In the Brendan Glenn killing, um, one thing is for certain now that Chief Beck can make a comment before the investigation ends, actually before the investigation begins. He can come up with conclusive evidence, and we'll be back each time someone's shot now demanding for your opinion, for your conclusive opinion. He didn't wait long to say, yo, it was a black cop who shot the black kid, so we're different. If I was a black cop in this building, I'd be up in, boy, I'd be in uproar right now um, for the chief to raise black on black crime in that way. The dog whistle politics, how dare you? How dare you? And sober off, I, I just love it. I just love when I'm able to make you roll your eyes and lean back and rock back because it means I'm hitting you with truth, right? I'm hitting you with truth and we're gonna keep coming back. We're gonna stay in the streets. We're gonna keep calling out the truth and you keep talking back because we now know you can talk before the investigation. We now know you have the power to render a conclusive opinion. We'll be back. Thank you. This concludes our public comment period. We're now on item number 10, closed session. The Board of Police Commissioners will now recess into closed session to discuss item numbers 10A1 and 10A2 in accordance with Government Code 54957.